Okay, on day one of the 2012 London Summer Games, every Olympics, when they run that first cycling race on the first Saturday of the Olympics, that's definitely one of my favorite events. I definitely have to talk about this. I've been kind of a minor cycling fan of watching the sports in the Tour de France the past few years. Um, they do great coverage of it on NBC Sports, which was used to be versus... Um, it's a really competitive sport, and it's a really sp good sport that takes a lot of strategy and a lot of hard endurance. I mean, these guys ride, in the Tour de France, they ride like 20, they ride like over 100 miles a day for like 20 straight days with like only like a couple of days break for the Tour de France. It's amazing what they do. And so in this race... I was really disappointed that it was really like the English countryside that they all went through. They didn't go through downtown London, of course. I thought they would go past Big Ben and stuff, kind of like how in 08 in Beijing they went past the Great Wall of China and down the middle corpse where they have a few statues in there. Um, but they didn't, but they went back past Buckingham Palace towards the last turn, but you don't really get to see it in the view of the camera. You're more focused on the race. Anyway, Alexei Vinokurov won it from Kazakhstan. He's 38 years old. It was an upset. The British team, oh my God, Mark Cavendish, he can never have this back. He's never going to have a chance to win a gold in his home country. That's really sad. And also, also awesome to watch him choke and the Britons choke. I love to watch the host country choke in events that they're favorited in. They think that they choked because you're not allowed to have a big team. Your team's only supposed to be allowed five members. So they were leading the peloton for most of the day. And what happened is a big breakaway group of like 24 riders broke away, all obviously selfishly going for the uh, gold because it's the Olympics. It only happens once every four years. So they, they raced their hearts out, and the peloton could never catch them. Here's another thing. The English roads in the countryside, it's not like France. They aren't made for the bicycles. It was, like, really narrow, really windy at parts. Even Fabian Cancellara, one of the best time trialists in the world, crashed with, like, under 20 kilometers to go. It was a pretty dope crash. You didn't really see it coming. It just kind of happened. He, it didn't look like he was going that fast, but it was kind of like a jagged curve. Oh, man, I wanted to see Big Ben. But the final race came down to the guy from Colombia in Kazakhstan, and the guy from Colombia, he made a kind of a young mistake. He was kind of looking back and off to the side, and once he got flat-footed, basically, the guy from Kazakhstan pulled away and took his shot right there. Um, I wish the race could have been a little bit better, like if the peloton was able to catch the breakaway and it was ended up being a sprint running. That would have been dope. But they went 155 miles. That's longer than any stage of the Tour de France. They usually only go like 100 miles, like I was saying, 115 at the most. So this was a really long race for – and there was a climb too. So it was a long race for Cavendish to win. I guess if everyone knew the track better, they, the Britons probably wouldn't have been favored. So anyway, um, I think the time trial is on Wednesday, but those aren't as exciting as the first cycling race of the Olympics. Oh, man, it was awesome. I wish they would have gone through downtown, like I was saying, but still an awesome race. This was JBM 2K5. Check out more of my Olympic reviews and thoughts on the coverage that I'm going to be seeing for the 2012 London Games.